Now, in Plymouth, Colonel William Gould is our hero. Now, if you look at the monument, Colonel William Gould's name is not on it. It says James Wardlaw. James Wardlaw came to Plymouth and became governor of Plymouth Town in September 1643. William Gould arrived with him and a reinforcement of 600 poor boys. They were called a small regiment. For some reason, Colonel William Gould actually commanded at the Battle of Freedom Fields or the Sabbath Day Fight, that is, it was known then. Gould was an Exeter man. He was born in 1621. He was a widower with two children. He was a cavalry commander. Unlike Morris, who was an army commander, Colonel William Gould had been a cavalry captain for many, many months. And he'd fought in some of the small engagements down here at Saraton Down, Braddock, Polson Bridge, Mobbury. He was a successful cavalry commander and was promoted after Lansdowne to command all the cavalry in Devon, but there weren't many of them. So he moved off and went to London and was given a regiment of poor boys, which he brought to Plymouth. Now, he was here on the morning of September of December the 3rd. For some reason, Colonel Wardlow wasn't here, and I think he'd have, he must have been ill or he had a fallout with the mayor because there was a lot of trouble between the civic and the military. Across the way, Prince Morris, 8,000 men, successful commander. Colonel Gould, not a second-rate commander, but not a well-known person. His name's not even on the monument. The only memory to Colonel William Gould is Mount Gould Road. It doesn't even call him William Gould Road. It's Mount Gould Road. Nobody probably who lives in this area knows the connection. that It was Colonel William Gould who saved Plymouth on that day. Gould, on the morning of December the 3rd, was the man who inspired the defence of this Lipson Fort area. The Lipson Fort stood right behind you, and that's what the, Royal, what the Royalists made for. They marched up. After crossing the creek, you heard the story of the battle before. They came across this area up towards the Lipson Fort over there, a massive earthwork where that buff house now stands. That was the extent of it, a big earthwork. The fighting went on down Mount Gould Road. Colonel William Gould was inspirational to his troops. He brought reinforcements from the other forts along to the west, the march, and from the town, and gathered a thousand men around him. Prince Morris, who was probably still ill, did not get involved in the fighting itself. He left it to his commanders, which if he was young, if he was more able, he would have probably been in with the thick of the fighting as he was in many of the battles he took part in. Now, Colonel William Gould ended up the winner, Prince Morris the loser. This defeat was not the main uh, barrier to Royalist possession of Plymouth. There was another fight at uh, Magdalen Fort later, just to the west of Magdalen Fort, Pennycombe Quick, which we beat off as well. Because if the Royalists had broken the line in anywhere along this outer edge, they would have had the town at its mercy. They would have brought cannons up and fired down. Colonel William Gould was again, inspirational at the fighting at Baron Pennycombe Quick. And it was his tenacity and quick thinking and his bravery, because he actually had two horses shot from under him here, that won the battle for us and saved Plymouth. After the war, Colonel William Gould unfortunately died. Within three months, he died of plague and was buried on March 27, 1644 in St. Andrew's churchyard. Um, Prince Morris moved away from Plymouth after the Magdalen, uh, the Pennycombe Quick fiasco. He took his army away and went towards... Have a care! Stand to your own! Stand to your own! Stand to your own! Bring in your muskets to your comfort. Prepare to march. March on!